Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. And a happy Thanksgiving to all of you that celebrate it. Mm -hmm. Have a good day for all of you that don't. It is actually Thanksgiving Day, and I pretty much get kicked out of the kitchen when it's cooking time. So I thought I'd come up here and shoot a little video. I have been incredibly busy with day job work, and every time I think I'm ahead and I can take it easy, then all kinds of stuff gets piled on me and I realize, shit, I really can't. I got a lot to do. So Monday, I worked until nine o'clock at night. And then I ended up working all day Tuesday, well into Tuesday night as well. And yesterday was supposed to be uh, a day of rest. It was one of those days of rest that we were getting. And then today and tomorrow we're off for normal. So I was supposed to have Wednesday till next Monday off. Didn't work out that way. I ended up working almost all of yesterday as well. So that's why I haven't posted anything because all I've been doing is day job stuff. You know, I always say freaking working for a living sucks. I have now gotten to a point where I am really trying to hone down my kit. Now I pretty much have most of what I want for still photography. There isn't really anything I need there, although I would like the 70 to 200 F 2.8 G Master version two. But for photography, I don't really need anything else. I'm pretty much gonna have everything I need. Then as far as filming goes, I'm always playing around. I'm always buying new stuff, trying new things out, just seeing how I can change things up. But for the most part, this is my kit. I have my ZV-1 that's sitting here that's not going to leave the studio. It will stay here and it will be this talking head studio stuff pretty much for the rest of time. <laughs> I have another ZV-1 that I use as an overhead camera. That ain't going anywhere because it is the perfect camera for that. I don't really need any more lights. I'm all good to go there. And then of course, my trusty A7C. I gotta say, the more I use this camera, the more I love it. And I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. I've showed this before on this A7C. This is pretty much how I always have it set up with the exception of the fact that I'll have the Rode Wireless Go on it or my Sennheiser MKE 400. But this is pretty much the system. I got it on the Mantis Pod because I can always just disconnect it very quickly and you know, it's, it's good to go. Now the thing I like about the handle, I mean, I definitely use the handle. I'm constantly grabbing it by the handle. So I think it's important to have it on the handle uh, but the nice thing, the small rig, is that you can pull out the little thingy here, the little Allen wrench. 10 seconds, it's dot. Now I've got still camera and you know, I can hold it like this for video or whatever I need to do if I don't want the handle on it and I'm good to go. Always have a cage on it. And this cage from small rig was a game changer because of the silicone handle because that makes this grip one of the nicest grips on a camera I've ever had. Now, it didn't come that way, of course, and I didn't have a problem with the grip in the first place, but once I got this new cage that had the extension silicone handle, I realized how much better this camera is by having that grip on there. So this is now my main go-to camera. I use three lenses for video. I'll go back to this. I have the, the Sony, 20 millimeter f1.8 g lens the lens that i originally bought the camera with which is the sony 16 to 35 f4 i decided to get the f4 version instead of the 2.8 version because this has oss and we all know with sony with these older cameras they need all the help they can get i will say though that the oss doesn't really help all that much so i would contemplate getting a 16 to 35 2.8 to have the lower light but i do have this 20 millimeter and i found a workaround for not having any reach i'll talk about that in a minute and then the other lens that i got is one of their one of those new ones which is the 40 millimeter i decided to go with a 40 instead of a 50 or the 24 so it's the 40 millimeter f 2.5 this thing is tiny and light as popcorn. I mean, it is really small and light and it makes the a7C a fantastic street camera. And that 40 millimeter is, is what do they say? 50 millimeters, pretty much how you see that 40 millimeters, just a little bit different. And that's the way I like to do things just a little bit different, but it's a great lens. And the 2.5 actually is pretty good in low light. Then, like I showed you before, I used the Sennheiser MKE 400 microphone or Rode Wireless Go. And I like to use the Rode Wireless Go more 
simply because of the fact that, boom, I always put it on there. And people always say, oh, you gotta hide it. You don't want people to see you got a mic on. I don't care. And that's why I put my little logo on there so that it's clipped right there and people look and they're like, what is that thing? And it starts a conversation. Love talking to people. That's why I have that there because it picks up my voice perfectly and I don't have to worry about being too low, too high. And if it is too high because I talk loud, sometimes I could just cut it back by like five decibels and it makes it perfect. And that's a simple drop the slider down. The one thing that I have been wrestling with since I started doing all this is filters. Now I always put a clear UV filter on all of my lenses. I'm not even gonna argue about that. I don't put it on there because it enhances the quality of the light and all that shit and blah, blah, blah. I put it on there so I don't bust my lenses. I don't mind breaking 50 bucks compared to breaking 2000. What I have wrestled with is the variable NDs or even an ND filter at all. I just ordered this one. This is a KNF concept variable ND filter and I only get the like two to five stop ones and it's for this little 40 millimeter F2.5. And that's because it's tiny. The front thing is tiny. And I put the hood on here, this little hood, which just adds another level of protection. But then I put a UV filter on the front of that. It's a 49 millimeter. And I had the smallest one I had was 52. So I was like, oh, screw it, I'll just get one. So now I have a variable ND filter on here because I do like to use this lens to film with. I found the other day when I was out and it was bright ass sun and we were in a place where there was absolutely no shade whatsoever. Everything was blown out. So you didn't see anything that I shot that Saturday last week because it was all blown out. Now, the other thing that I got, it's a KNF variable ND at 72 millimeters. It will fit on the 20 millimeter, but that's because I have a step up ring on here, but then it also fits perfectly on the 16 to 35. I like it and I hate it. The reason that I usually don't like to get variable is because most of them suck. Well, most of them suck because I buy shitty ones. After spending so much money on shitty ND filters and variable ND filters, like a dumbass, as I know, you buy cheap, it means you buy expensively because you, then when you realize how crappy the shitty cheap one is, you have to go out and buy the, the good one and you could have just taken that money and spent it. I know I have a couple of step up ranks coming and I'm doing what I should have done from the beginning with all this stuff, but dumb monkey didn't know any better. But I am now buying the Freewell like magnetic swap system lenses in 82 millimeters and then using step up and step down rings to fit on any lens that I need it to fit on. I'm just waiting until tomorrow to see if they actually go on a Black Friday sale. But if they don't, it's 400 bucks. I've read a ton of reviews. I've watched a ton of videos where they compare it to the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon. And when it gets right down to it, the Peter McKinnon stuff would be interesting. And if I spent 450 bucks right now, I would get the two to five, the six to nine, Plus, because I'm getting the two lens set, I would also get the like the the blue filter that puts the lines through the lighting and all that kind of shit. I'm like, okay, or I could spend fifty dollars less and get like this massive set that has anything that I could ever need for any of the lenses that I'm going to use for filming. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. So again, I'm just waiting to see if the price drops at, at all for Black Friday or Cyber Monday, and then if it doesn't, I'll just order it and it'll come in and I'll start using it. All right. That's all I've got for you today. I just wanted to go over the whole filming setup and what I'm doing with these freaking filters and, and exactly what I'm using to film. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, as always, leave them down below because I'd love to hear what you guys are using or, or you know, I wanna hear your constructive criticism on, on you know, well, well, dude, why didn't you just do this? Or maybe you should try that because that's how I learn. So put it in the comment section down below. That'd be cool. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.